In the previous section, we began pre-processing our data and preparing for model baselining. In this section, we're going to cover the final steps necessary for building and baselining our first model and discuss how to evaluate its effectiveness. We'll start this section by covering model pipelines. Next, we'll cover a bit of theory around the bias variance trade-off before we finally move on to cross-validation and evaluating our models. In the end, we'll build that first baseline model. You'll find that in this section, as we begin covering some of the more specific modeling topics, we're going to get into a more theoretical vein of the work. Even so, each video will contain a practical component using scikit-learn classes, generally at the end. Here we are at the first video, where we're going to discuss scikit-learn pipelines and how to simplify your data pre-processing and modeling experience. First, we're going to look at the motivation for pipelines, and then we'll dive into the implementation in scikit-learn and cover some of the specifics around the pipeline's interface. The motivation for the pipeline is spurred by the fact that most real data is going to enter the system in a very messy state. In addition to having to persist state for every transformer you fit, every transformation you make is going to hold a new copy of the data in memory. The scikit-learn pipeline is a wrapper class that allows us to pass incoming data straight through the pre-processing stages and into the estimator without retaining multiple copies, and we only have to persist one class to disk. Moreover, if our transformers are performing any type of feature selection techniques, it's important to include that preprocessing within the scope of cross-validation, which we'll get to in a later section, but pipelines greatly simplify this task. The final model you put into production should really be situated within a pipeline. This means that each transformative state you apply to the dataset will have to be written into a custom transformer class, as we've covered in previous videos. Let's jump over to our IRIS notebook and scroll down to the pipeline section. In this example, we'll show you how you can stack a transformer inside of a pipeline wrapper. Since IRIS is such a clean data set, there are not many changes we have to make, although we did introduce some missing values. Therefore, we'll need to put our imputer inside of the pipeline. Notice that we haven't added an estimator yet. We've just loaded the pipeline and added one single imputer. This is a transformer class, not our estimator. We won't add the estimator until the last video of this section, but let's take a look at how the pipeline allows us the same functionality as any other transformer does. We'll start with the interface. The interface, or the pipeline, takes a single argument, a list comprised of length two tuples. Notice that the first element of the tuple is the name for the stage. This has to be unique. The second argument is the stage itself, which is generally a transformer that has not yet been fit. Now we can fit this pipeline as we would any other transformer here. Notice that the shape coming out of the pipe, which now has the transform method, resembles the shape going in, although the values are now imputed. If we skip over to the heart disease notebook and down to the baseline section, you can see that we've stacked several transformers on top of each other for the pipeline. Note that the order of transformers is very important. The pipeline is similar to a queue. The data will progress from the front to the back. In the heart disease example, we needed the dummy encoding to take place prior to the categorical imputer. In later videos, we'll get into why the naming of stages is important but we'll save that for the model tuning section. For now, you've been introduced to the interface of the pipeline.